Community Designs is proudly brought to you by Design Build Expo, Australia's ultimate trade event for architecture, building, construction and design professional communities. Visit designbuildexpo.com.au for more information. My name is Monique Woodward and this is another episode of Community Designs. Today we're visiting the Braybrook Community Hub. Let's go check it out. We're standing here today on this beautiful artwork in the foyer of the Braybrook Community Centre. I'd like to introduce Jim Cresp, who's the architect for the project. Jim, tell us about this gorgeous space. Thank you. The, uh, this, this project really is the uh, the culmination of a range of developments associated with getting different community activities into a new, into a new building. So the objective was to get a, uh, uh, a strong community engagement and to, and to allow the community to feel warm, friendly and, and feel safe within this, uh, within this building. We've, we've brought in a range of external uh, natural materials, timbers, uh, polished concrete into the, into the facility so that it, it makes it's both robust and has a warmth and, uh, and itself helps the community be feel comfortable with the with the space yeah no it's got a gorgeous uh, address sense of address from uh, from the road do you want to talk about the materiality and the motifs of the entry to the outside we've used we've used some some glass with some tints in it with also a, a motive of the uh, eucalypt leaf and and nut is it true that this was actually a renovation Yes, it was a renovation of an existing project. So we've built a new building around it. It's very much a building in the in the round, so that every every element of the site is uh, is is set like a front door. So people can come in from the either the, the childcare area or from the sports area or from the library, all feeling as though there's a sense of they have their own arrival space and a connection. And this central hub is allows all people to overlap and and to engage and connect with other, other components within the centre. So that, that offers diversity and variety. Yeah. yeah, it does seem to be sitting quite high up on the land. Um, do you want to talk about why that was important and those level changes and... The existing levels were set very much by the existing building, but we saw that as an opportunity for the, uh, the building to sit on a prominent position and with the glass screens and the library to be allowing people to fit, sit within the building and to be comfortable to oversee where the, where the community is and to reinforce that sense of a safe environment so they can be learning on the uh, improving their education and their health if they're in the community health centre and at the same time feeling as though there's a, there's a strong community focus. Um, we're standing in front of the library, do you want to go in? Sounds good. <laughs> So here we are in the beautiful library. Um, Jim, tell us about these gorgeous panels. This, this, is a, this is a great opportunity to see the, see the view out from the upper level, looking through the, through the glass with the, the timber and the connection to both the, the landscape and also the, uh, the, the elevated position you get from, uh, from where we are. Yeah, I think this is my favorite space. I think, um, you know, you get the beautiful windows, they open onto the oval behind. Um, you've got the beautiful, uh, yeah, really Australian motif on the windows and um, I don't know, I kind of uh, feel like it's a really optimistic space. I think, I think part of the whole design was to get a sense that from, from people coming into this space they could, mm -hmm. using education as an opportunity for them to improve and to, and to learn and given the uh, sort of the, uh, I guess the community or the client, client group mm -hmm. that opportunity to learn and improve their, mm -hmm. their position was, was fantastic mm -hmm. and from an elevated view within the building mm -hmm. they, can, uh, they can get a sense of what's happening mm -hmm. around them mm -hmm. and the motif we developed from the uh, leaves of the eucalypts within the, mm -hmm. within the site. Mm -hmm. so we 
we thought that was a nice, a nice connection. And the uh, the panels also give an impression of the of the, the, the pages of a book opening up yeah. and therefore sort of sh connecting to the yeah. to the back to the street. Mm. Yeah, I love how so suburban I guess it is. It's sort of the banality of the suburbs, and you know this the facility almost um, you know sits sort of uh, at a similar height to the houses behind, um, but sort of really does have that civic presence. Um, I don't know, I really enjoy sort of looking onto the car park. It kind of feels really, uh, really sort of, yeah, suburban and that it's sort of sitting tucked away into the landscape. It's nice. It was a difficult job to try and get a context where we've got an, <laughs> an existing building in the middle of a, a pretty much a paddock yeah. and the connections across the road aren't particularly handsome <laughs> by, their, by their nature. So we wanted our building to feel as though it was mm -hmm. both a, was a civic building and it had a, yep. had a quality and a richness to it. Mm -hmm. And the idea of the, of the panels on the outside very much was a, a transition and an ability for the, for the building to sit comfortably Mm. And importantly, for the for the clients and the uh, the visitors to the site, feeling as though they were they were comfortable mm. and and safe. There's been a strong mm. connection through the our early works with the uh, focus groups on how the the uh, they wanted the building to feel as though it was theirs yep. and to have uh, have an understanding of how they could engage mm. with it. Mm. And there's been a fantastic response from that perspective. The there's been no vandalism and and really a great uh, a great engagement. So we've been very pleased that that's been a, an outcome in a, in a pretty uh, interesting environment as it, as it was. Do you want to talk a little bit about the old, the old building that was originally here and how uh, it sort of went from, uh, yeah, the original building to... Um, so the, there was no library originally, so that's been one of the major advantages to bring, bring the library into the new project, but there was, there was a community health component, mm -hmm. there was a, a hall, and there was a small childcare centre, but they were very very much sort of uh, behind brick, brick walls with no sense of looking out or being uh, engaged with, uh, with the community and at the same time there was vandalism and uh, and it was a very uh, it was a very sort of tough environment I think from that perspective so by being open open and outward looking yeah. the uh, we've tried to change the community perception on on the building and the uh, and the communities responded fantastically well mm -hmm. under that basis yeah I guess it's one of those things that if the community feels that they've been invested in they'll mm -hmm. take ownership mm -hmm. of the building mm -hmm. itself and take pride in in that building. Um, yeah, we, we can't ask the, the community to, to respect or engage with the building if they don't feel as though they have had a, a, a sense of the community has been uh, given them some investment in, in assets and, and sort of uh, the, whole, um, the whole sense of the community being provided with uh, better facilities makes them feel good because they feel as though they're being they're being respected yep. and they feel as though they're being um, um, encouraged to participate so I think that's been a, a good a good outcome. Jim do you want to talk a little bit more about the user groups and you know what impact they had on you know the spatial arrangements of the place? The, uh, each of the user groups really had their own focus in terms of how the how the library was going to work within its own environment, how the childcare group needed to have a mm -hmm. connection with the landscape space. Yep. But our view was we wanted to make sure all of those things could work well, mm -hmm. but at the same time there was a central focus where you came in through a, a mm -hmm. common a common entrance mm -hmm. and from that perspective everyone was engaged in all of the elements. So whether the gentlemen were in the men's shed or whether the sporting people were coming yep. from their area, they could still come through and borrow a book on the way out or uh, get engaged in some of the other the other elements within it so we think the overall design by having many of those groups combined within one building gives a better overall outcome than it would be individually providing those facilities in a separate arrangement so the the notion of a hub as a combined entity we think has a much more powerful uh, position both in the in the community and from the from the sense of how the how the uh, you know, how the community enjoys the, the overall mm. building. Maybe talk a little bit about the, the spaces that come off the library, the meeting spaces and how those are used. I think part of the, uh, part of the objective was that while people were in the building, they, they didn't have a sense that it was you know, either in the library or only in the library, so that there was, there was computer spaces and, and meeting spaces that could connect mm. to, those, to those primary circulation areas. So mm. at different times they could be used by, by students within the, within the library or they could be used by the community spaces and you'll find people on, mm. 
sewing machines or doing art in, in some yep. of these spaces. So there's a, a real diversity of what's happening in those, in those areas. And there's quite a range of different uh, groups that are all working mm -hmm. in those spaces at different times. So there's a, very much a sharing and through that, the, uh, the connection and the inter integration works, works really well. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much for joining me, Soraya. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> well, uh, my name's Soraya and I live in Brebu. I shopping in Brebu and I work here as well at the hub. My children go to school in Brebu. Yeah. And I am Brebu. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what, is this, what does this community hub mean to you? Well, this community hub mean a lot to myself and to my community. Mm because uh, this, this new building that we get, uh, we have new library that um, of our friend in community, they never read or write or join library, but since this library open, they become the member of the library. Mm -hmm. That's a really big achievement for our friend in yeah. the community. Mm -hmm. And also uh, this building is, um, uh, equal uh, in job opportunity, it creates job within the community as mm. well. Mm. Uh, like myself, I work two days here with Co Health. Yeah. And yeah, and um, also this building really important to us because it's a place for education, for training. We got computer class, English class for our uh, community that they just you know uh, join us in Braybook new arrival, they need a lot of support yeah. and we got a lot uh, happening here. Mm -hmm. We got parent group, we got sewing class, we got um, English for beginner, like they can't speak English, they come here to learn. Yeah, wow. And we got cooking class as well, uh, uh, cultural cooking class yep. from different culture. Yeah, wow. So this building is really important to us because it bring the community together from a uh, diversity background. Mm. People come from different background and it's bring them here together and the activity that provided in this hub yep. is, is uh, really important to our community. Mm. And we're really grateful that we have this building, the new building, it's really good for us. And tell me about Braybrook On Board. The Braybrook On Board is a great opportunity mm -hmm. for people who are passionate about community yes. and want to want to get on board and and um, take a, a leadership role. Mm -hmm. To uh, for myself, my experience about this program is helping us to fill the gap between community and the council. Yes. Because this program initiative by Malibanong Council mm -hmm. and Victoria University, yeah. through this program help us to understand that the um, Malibanong Council mm -hmm. Uh, is actually working for the community, yeah. which is a lot of us, we didn't know that before. Yeah. We thought they just collecting uh, ticket <laughs> fire and council red and that sort of thing. But yeah. joining this program help us to understand that they done a lot for community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we really grateful for the program. And also that through that program, it gave us opportunity to uh, learn the skill about notice and observing the needs of the community mm -hmm. and get the support by the council mm -hmm. to, for us to run a project. Yeah. Brave Book on Board 2015 from mm -hmm. last year. I did the Chin project. Yeah. The reason I did the Chin project because I observed that in our community we got a lot of Chin, mm -hmm. which is from Burma. Yeah. They knew to Brebu mm -hmm. and they're not really settling in because of culture and language. So therefore, um, I observe the needs and implement the project called the Chin Project and helping uh, them to have six workshops, which is um, learning English to hand on activities, mm -hmm. like informal, yeah. but fun. Yeah, yes. that's so important. This building have bring positive outcome to the community. We receive things that 
we didn't have before. Like this building been stand for nearly two years now and we don't have vandalism. It's because the community appreciate what they got. And uh, also uh, this building is a starting point for us, something positive that uh, community can build on together and um, they can build on together and uh, find a sense of belonging mm. and uh, then contribute back to community mm. in the future to come. So that's why this building is important to Bray Book. Yeah, amazing. Thank yes. you so much. I'm here in the kindergarten with Mona and Hamda. Um, tell me a bit about what this space means to you. So the space is actually quite incredible. It means a lot to myself and the community. There's a lot of services here. There's the child maternal nurse. Um, there's co-health that's here. There's um, a social worker. There's a library. There's just a bunch of services that you can access. So it's like all the one services in just the one community hub. So it means a lot. You don't have to go too far. And it connects us as a community to just come together. And you meet a lot of people from the community and whatnot. So it's really nice and really empowering. Yeah. 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 And you do volunteer work as well? Yeah, I do volunteer work. So I've started volunteering since February and that's just really helped me get, you know, introduced to a lot of kids in the community and help them all the way from prep to um, year 12. They come bring their work and we have a lot of tutors and it's just growing every day and it's so nice to see the kids improving in their yeah. education just coming somewhere where you know they can get help and feel empowered yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and what's your favorite space so my favorite space will probably be mm. the library just I love reading I love books it just looks amazing it's like a place full of just treasure and then you can just get lots of different you mm. know genres and yeah it's really nice I just love reading so yeah I, my favorite space will probably be the library yeah yeah, yeah awesome yeah. and um, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, international um, books within the library. There's a lot yeah, of, um, there's a lot. And they also have it in different languages. So people that don't speak lang um, English as their first language can actually access, like, I think there's Arabic, Vietnamese, and they're able to still feel connected and understand things because there's those um, books and stuff like yeah. videos, DVDs, all that stuff that are in different languages. So yeah, yeah. it's really nice. That's yeah. so awesome. So what's your favorite space? My favourite space would be the library because um, I also love reading as well because it keeps me like nice and relaxed and it's also a good place to do your homework and keep quiet. <laughs> and you come here with your friends? I, not all the time. No. Yeah. But you come here for tutoring? Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you learn when you're being tutored? When I'm being tutored, um, I learn maths. Um, I do projects sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, reading, and much more. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And so, why is this building so important to you? Um, because I feel like the community is a amazing place. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Uh, what do you think has been the biggest impact on the community? The biggest impact I just feel like is just the way that everyone can just come together and they're able to access the services regardless of their language, um, regardless of how long they've been here. It's just accessible for everyone to get help and to come together yeah. and just to really know who lives around here and stuff. And it's just really nice that we all get to connect on that level and grow and you know, become successful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah amazing. And yeah. so you, you're at university now? Yeah, I'm at university. And I'm studying public health and health promotion. So it's just my passion to, you know, have healthy people and have them be able to access healthcare no matter what their background is and just have fairness for everyone. Yeah, so it's just it's a really nice place to just come together and meet the community because I do want to work with them yeah. one day. Yeah. yeah. Thank you finish. so much. Thank You're you so welcome. much. For Thank your time. you so much for yeah. your opportunity. Thank you.
We're standing in the infamous man's shed and I'm here with Stephen Wall. Uh, can we talk a little bit about how the project came to be and uh, your involvement? Uh, certainly. So Maribyrnong City Council back in 2011 uh, commenced a, a project called Revitalising Braybrook. Yep. Uh, the council uh, had recognised that Braybrook was uh, a disadvantaged community and uh, it needed some help. The, the Revitalising uh, project, the Revitalising Braybrook project, uh, looked at a number of initiatives uh, to help change the suburb of Braybrook and give the uh, residents of Braybrook what they deserve, which are, yep. you know, facilities and services uh, equal mm -hmm. to that anywhere else in Melbourne. Uh, the the Braybrook hub mm -hmm. is probably the pinnacle of the revitalising Braybrook project. Yeah, yeah. This is an amazing, amazing space. Do you want to talk about what happens in here? Oh, this is the men's shed. So uh, the Braybrook hub has a lot of different uh, functions and facilities and. Uh, uh, men from the, the Braybrook community come in here and congregate and socialise and create some amazing things. So it's, yeah. a, it's a wonderful space. Yeah. And uh, how was the project funded? So the project uh, cost council about $12.5 million, uh, with uh, $3.5 million coming from the Victorian state government. Yeah. $9 million from council. So a very significant investment from the Maribyrnong City Council. And so were you part of setting up the brief for the space? Uh, I, I, uh, I'm currently the Chief Executive Officer of Maribyrnong City Council, have been for the last two years. Uh, prior to that I did spend some time as the Director of Corporate Services at Maribyrnong City Council, so I was here in the early stages of the revitalising Braybrook project. And part of the uh, Braybrook hub is Braybrook's first ever library. You know, in the 21st century to have, have a suburb, mm -hmm. an inner, inner city suburb of Melbourne, which has never had a library before was a disgrace and, mm, and council yeah. recognised that and the, the library is you know one of the most important parts of this facility and we've mm. had over a quarter of a million visitors in its first year of operation to the uh, Braybrook Library. Yeah and so maybe talk a little bit more about the impact that it's had on the community. It's had a staggering uh, impact on the community. There is so much pride within the Braybrook community for this facility. Uh, it is interesting uh, in the western suburbs of, of Melbourne, graffiti is mm. often a problem to us. Yep. Uh, the Braybrook hub hasn't had any graffiti on it since it's been here over a couple of years. Yeah. Um, I think that in itself mm. uh, speaks volumes for how much pride the community have in this facility. Yep. And, and again, the community of Braybrook deserve facilities like this and council is particularly proud that they could deliver such a facility. Yeah, yeah, no, it's incredible. And I guess the stories that we've heard from different people that have been using uh, the space have been uh, so optimistic. It seems like it's had a real impact. Well, it's changing lives. The Revitalising Braybrook project, uh, as I said, there, there's many initiatives that, that fall under that banner. But uh, this hub is a place for the community to gather, to, the community to uh, socialise, the community to learn, uh, the community to, to come and, and attend to their health issues. Uh, we have a, a really diverse community mm. in yeah. Braybrook. 50% of the population uh, don't have English as their first language. Yeah. So a facility like this provides uh, tremendous opportunities for the community to, to, to come together and uh, uh, to become strong. And so what's the sort of five year plan for this community, for this space? Do you imagine it sort of evolving over time? And um... so, so surrounding the uh, facility, you would have noticed there's, uh, there's sporting ovals and uh, uh, there's playgrounds. The council has got some plans around further enhancement in the open space. Mm. Uh, we did have uh, a, a, a fairly significant playground that, that uh, uh, is, is in the process of being replaced. Yep. Uh, so again, Council won't take their foot off the pedal in regard to this facility or yep. this suburb yep. and there, there are lots of plans to continue delivering good services and new infrastructure into Braybrook. Yeah, no, I noticed uh, on the wall there was a beautiful plan for the plane yeah. uh, playground. Maybe talk a little bit about that. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, a little while back uh, we had a, quite a significant playground, uh, the, uh, the, the, the airplane park as it was affectionately known because mm. it was a uh, uh, a, a play space that was in the shape of, a, of an aeroplane. Uh, unfortunately it, it uh, was destroyed by fire mm. uh, and council's in the process of replacing that and mm. uh, we've been engaging with the community. Mm. Uh, Braybrook as a suburb has a long history with regard to uh, planes. Uh, mm. There was uh, Air Force uh, construction and, and, and uh, connection uh, in Braybrook back yeah. during the early 1900s 
And so council is trying to capture that heritage yeah. and uh, let's face it, a plane park's pretty good fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's awesome. So what's your favourite space? Oh, look, I like the library. I think yeah. it, the library in Braybrook and you know, we have a number of library facilities across the city of Maribyrnong, but the Braybrook Library is by far our best. And yeah. I'm really proud of the fact that uh, I was part of the, uh, the team that delivered this first ever library into this suburb. It, it, it is, it is uh, so loved and it, it is always such a great place to go and uh, it, it's always got such a good vibe about it. So for me, the library hands down is, uh, is, is my highlight of this uh, facility, but there are many other parts of it, none, not, <laughs> not, not, not the least of which are the men's shed. Uh, I mean, how, how uh, it's probably a little too flash for a men's shed to be honest, but <laughs> yeah. uh, we're very lucky to have such a great facility and uh, you know, our staff are particularly proud to be able to work in the library and to support the community. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, a round of applause to you. I think that um, the council have done an amazing job. So thank you so much. Oh, I, as, as Chief Executive Officer of the council, I need to acknowledge <laughs> the councillors that have been yeah. particularly at the forefront of driving this change to Braybrook. Mm -hmm. A number of, number of our longer term councillors uh, have spent a lot of time working with this community. Yeah. And uh, again, I, my hat goes off to the councillors. Because yeah. uh, again, it, it was a significant investment uh, by the council of the day. Mm. Uh, there are lots of uh, needs and lots of uh, mm. wants for, for uh, the city of Maribyrnong and for council to you know, commit to this investment mm. yep. was an outstanding decision. And I think it's paying off uh, big time now. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Pieces of architecture like this have a massive impact on the neighbourhood. Join us next week for another Community Designs.